That was music from a concert that took place in Paris this week in solidarity with Ukraine. One of the artists taking part was the renowned Franco-Georgian pianist Katia Bunyatishvili. Thank you for being here. It's a Thank pleasure you. to have you. Now, Katia, what was it like to perform with so many different artists in this context? It feels somehow weird that there are kids and women and men in Ukraine suffering in every day, uh, during every day, and uh, you cannot do anything about it, and you're doing a concert in purpose to somehow mobilize something or financially help or to spread a message that stop should the war should stop. It's a necessity, but at the same time, there's a contrast in what you're feeling and being dressed, being on stage. But I guess the motivation of all these artists was there. They were mentally and physically there to encourage to do something for them. And we wanted just to collect some money for people who are in need right now. Is that the best way, do you think, for an artist to protest at a time like this, to perform? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that best way uh, for a human being uh, is to find a way to protest it somehow. And with different professions, journalists do their thing, musicians do their thing. Uh, but uh, at the end, it uh, depends on human being, what you want to say, what you have to do, uh, what you want to do and how much can you do in this uh, situation. I think the message we had uh, um, during this evening was that we... It's not about choosing the sides, where is the bad side, where is the good side. It's more about we're against the war and it has to stop as soon as possible. Um, because it's 21st century and I think uh, diplomacy should be the way to negotiate things. And if it doesn't happen, it means that uh, there is no achievement, no progress in politics. And we're stuck in the history, uh, which gave us a lesson that we shouldn't do war anymore. But somehow we didn't manage to make some progress and be simply human beings to have a dialogue, who have a dialogue and can find a solution without the war. You yourself have taken some action, though you haven't, you stopped performing in Russia in 2008. Yes. Um, tell us about your reasons for that. There was a war in Georgia in 2008 and um, despite my love for Russian culture and Russian people and this country and this language, my connection with this country, I decided not to perform there anymore. I refused every uh, um, every, every invitation because uh, as a human being, as a citizen of Georgia, first of all, but also as a human being, I wanted to protest the aggression. And um, at that time, I was not among many of the artists who did that because they didn't want to make uh, political statements. And I, of course, I understood them, but... Um, I thought that it was not a political statement, it was more about action against the aggression, you know, peaceful reaction against the aggression and, uh, well, the intuition that um, it might go farther and it's not only about the Georgian territory, but it could also, you know, happen somewhere else in a, on a bigger territory as Ukraine is. The fear and the intu intuition that it might happen one day was there. Uh, and unfortunately it happened, uh, hoping that it will not happen anymore, but it happened. So sometimes protest doesn't bring uh, much, but m probably it's important to uh, not to, you know, not to forget about the consciousness of our acts as a human being, as an artist, but most importantly as a human being. Georgia and Ukraine's efforts to have closer ties with the West have been something that's angered Russia for a long time. Both countries are applying for EU membership. Mm. Do you think that's going to make tensions worse? Uh, well, I hope that not, but I guess it can uh, somehow bring not such a positive reactions from our big neighbor. Um, uh, but I think that we want Europe and uh, in European countries in the Western civilization, I think that human rights are better protected. Um, human beings can be more free and creative in those countries. That's the reason why they want to be part of uh, this uh, civilization. Also, we are part of this civilization because during centuries we were part of this civilization. But it might have unpleasant consequences, apparently, yes. Katia, you were born in Georgia. The director of the fashion house Balenciaga, um, Demna Gvasvalia, was also born in Georgia. At the start of his show at Paris Fashion Week, he paid tribute to Ukrainians fleeing the country. Models walked down the catwalk through some fake snow, carrying big sacks with their possessions in them. 
He said on Instagram, the war in Ukraine has triggered the pain of a past trauma I have carried in me since 1993, when the same thing happened in my home country. When he was 12, he was one of 250,000 Georgians forced from their homes by Abkhazian separatists during Georgia's civil war, crossing the Caucasus Mountains with his family. Now, you were very young during that civil war, only six, I think. Um, what memories do you have of that time? Uh, well, my parents protected us. They didn't want to show us what happens outside outside our apart apartment. Of course, we, we were living in a poverty, as most of the population at that time. Uh, and um, we were kids who had, uh, you know, not such a good conditions to live. Uh, that's it. But uh, they really tried to cover all the situation, what was happening in Georgia at that time, with art with creativity and not to give us time to think about what's going on outside. Also, we didn't have much connection with the outside world because mostly we're in the books and with music and uh, school and parents. That was it. They protected us as they uh, could with 100%. 100%. But I think that traumas are always there for kids. You cannot just take it away. You can still smell the fear. You can still sm smell the of not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, this kind of not knowing and not being secure in your atmosphere. You, children, they feel it. And that's the trauma also of today's kids in Ukraine, I guess. And it makes maybe a person more strong. But at the same time, you have some kind of pain in yourself that you always wear with yourself and you have the view on life with this pain, I guess. And I do not wish this for other children for new generations. And I was hoping that 21st century was an interesting century and century of information where we have access to all informations, uh, which uh, sometimes brings some indifference as well, unfortunately, uh, because as when you get too much information, then you become also indifferent to certain things. But I was hoping at least that it was a century of discussion, of diplomacy, of negotiation with words, not with arms, but um, we're disappointed, all of us. And the cultural world has been affected. There have been many um, protests in the cultural world. The principal conductor and musical director of the Bolshoi Theatre in Moscow is stepping down. Tugan Sokiev was appointed in 2014. And some Russian artists are being cancelled, such as the Bolshoi Ballet's residency at London's Royal Opera. Not everyone agrees with this reaction, though. Berlin-based star conductor Daniel Baramboum, um, whose grandparents were of Ukrainian descent, warned against condemning Russian culture uh, for President Putin's politics. Have a listen. Russian culture is not the same as Russian politics. We must condemn politics loud and clear and distance ourselves from it unequivocally. But we must not allow a witch hunt against Russian people and culture. Katia, do you think that politics and culture can be separated in a conflict like this? Uh, until the war is still here, no. Because first objective, objective view about is that uh, what do we want? We want to stop the war, right? Right now they're shooting people, they're shooting children, women, men. And after when the war stops, after that, of course, I would never point on Russian musicians that we're pro, pro the war, pro war or pro aggression or pro propaganda, I wouldn't point, of course, and I think that we shouldn't judge people. I don't like to judge people after the war. But during the war, what we should think about is how can we stop the war? You spoke a little bit about how art and culture helped you when you were um, younger and you fled your country. I want to take a listen to some of your music. Um, this is you playing a composition by the French composer and pianist Eric Satie. Uh, let's have a listen. That 
is from your album Labyrinth. What music do you turn to in difficult moments of your life? Very different. I don't have one composer. Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms. <laughs> Not easy to choose. Rachmaninov. Katya, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. We're going to play out with the Ukrainian national anthem that you performed last week with Paris's Chamber Music Orchestra. You're also going to be performing in Paris at the Philharmonie on the 23rd and 24th of March. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.